Simon from simonwood.com. I have five vaguely spicy reds. Are they vaguely spicy? Some of them might be out and out spicy. I really don't know because I've not tried them before. Well, I might have tried this one before, but it's a, it's a small bottle. I don't know if you can see the height, different heights of them, but this is so small. It's also small in alcohol. This is 12% and the others are 14 or 14 and a half. But does it punch above its weight? Let's give it a go. It's Cuvée Chasseur, uh, Vin de France, um, and it's Waitrose's, uh, I, I don't know if anyone else has got it apart from Waitrose, four and a bit quid. It's um, cheapy, made by Alan Grignon, one of the movers and shakers in the Languedoc. Pretty sure it'll be all Languedoc, although it just says Vin de France, so they could have any, anywhere, anything from anywhere in France in it, I think. Well, it smells like it's going to be um, what I call Bordeaux uh, propped up with um, some decent fruit. Uh, it, it smells like there's, there's this slight green berry and blackcurrant uh, earthy leafiness of Bordeaux. So I don't know if there, if there, if there probably isn't any Cabernet or Merlot in there now. Uh, but uh, then with something spicier and richer and heartier to uh, uh, to fill in the gaps. Um, it smells like it's going to be quite refreshing. Uh, I don't think it's one of those you could chill, but um, it's sort of an evening summer red. Soft, easy glug, um, no really hard edges. If I have a problem with it, it feels like they've left um, a bit of sweetness in there to uh, to round it out. Um, and I think that if they if they'd taken that out, it's probably not 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 it's not a sweet wine, but it just feels like there's that bit of sweetness muddying the flavours. Perfectly decent Tuesday night wine, sausage and mash. Bring it on. Forget about it. Next, watch it. Watch what is on the telly that night. Je peux le prendre, je peux le laisser. And I'll, I'll leave it for the moment. Uh, right, uh, next four. We are two from California. Are they all Mendocino? Well, Mendocino for uh, Parducci Zinfandel 2009. We've got another Parducci, then we've got a couple of Aussies. It smells like Zinfandel. It's got that sweet uh, briar and bramble uh, gutsy freshness, if that makes any sense. Ever so slightly jammy, um, ever so slightly boisterous. It's got a few, it's got a bit of a history, this wine. And uh, yes, it feels like maybe your mother wouldn't want, you, want you, uh, you to go out with it, but you'd have a good time when you did. But yes, it smells, yeah, it's a nice bit of spiciness there, uh, along with this brambles. One of those that creeps up on you. If you think it's gonna be all about those sw that sweet brambly fruit, and with a bit of stalkiness. And yes, that, that does take centre stage. But then underneath, there's a bit more structure and weight than you think you're anticipating. So uh, some Zinfandels try to overwhelm you with jammy, jamminess and intensity of, and alcohol. This one got a bit more freshness to it, a bit more structure and tannin. So um, some Zinfandels you can almost sit by yourself and sip. This is almost, you, you need a plate of sausages and you need probably a little bit of ketchup and mustard on the side. But, um, it's uh, certainly drink with something rather than by itself, and certainly drink it rather than sip it. Let's see how the next Parducci is, which has got some Zinfandel in. It's called Deep Roots. Blend of Syrah, Zinfandel, Carignan, Petite Syrah and Viognier. Uh, half a degree higher in alcohol, uh, a year older, no it's the same, it's the same vintage, again Mendocino 2009. Well, you do get some of that brambly Zinfandel uh, edge in there, but the Viognier seems to be speaking very strongly today. Not sure how much uh, Viognier is, is in there, but um, it feels like it's almost uh, slightly overwhelming it. It's got this uh, peach kernel, um, yeah, peach kernel umbrella over the bramble and berry fruit. And the Syrah will be chipping in with some of that, uh, that darker bramble, plum, berry fruit. But um, yeah, this Viognier character may be a bit too much, or is that just how it smells? Let's have a taste. Oh, not sure about that Viognier character there, because um, it seems to be really giving almost a little too much softness. Uh, I understand the idea of using Viognier to round out hard edges in the wine, but to be honest, if you're in Mendocino and you're growing grapes like that, they're pretty much going to ripen anyway. There's going to be no problem with the stalkiness and um, uh, unripe tannins if you're careful with the, uh, the wine making and the grape growing. And um, then having the uh, Viognier on top, it's almost it's what I call the cream and custard treatment. It's almost too much. You don't. I I I'd have said I'd, I'd have actually preferred it without without the Viognier. Having said that. It's a nice, rounded, soft, juicy wine with a bit of this personality as well. It's not just sort of like a rounded bimbo. Uh, but um, yeah, better without the Viognier. Might have a last sip. But yeah, the Viognier is the thing I'm left with rather than, uh, 
the other grapes. Hey, um, last two are from First Drop Winery in uh, South Australia, and um, Shiraz is a major influence in both of them. Uh, the first one, it's called Half and Half, and it's their Barossa Shiraz Monastrel. Monastrel, also known as in Australia and other places as Mataro, also known um, in France as Mourvedre. 2009 vintage, and I think it's probably 50 50 blend. If it's called Half and Half, You'd think so, wouldn't you? It's that deep, dark, inky, um, almost iron-rich character that uh, that speaks of uh, that speaks of the. Of, sometimes I get McLaren Vale and Barossa mixed mixed up um, in terms of in terms of the smell, but there's something here that is very warm South Australian. Uh, and if there's mint there, it's hovering in the background. It's not like uh, one of those uh, over eucalypted to, to coin a phrase over eucalypted wines. Difference between this and the one without the Morvedra? I'm going to have to wait till I taste it and find out. Just going to enjoy tasting it first. It's got this soft, hearty bramble, uh, bramble jam character. A bit too jammy. Um, certainly from what I was smelling, I was expecting something a little bit, um, fine is the wrong word, but um, yeah, something with a little bit more, um, yeah, it finishes sweet. Uh, I, the, the, what I'm left with in my mouth tastes, um, I, I can taste almost a touch of cola. cola. Um, I like the wine, but I don't like it as much as I thought I was going to. I prefer the, the way it smells. Um, I'll keep an eye on it. And um, as with a lot of big wines, the first impression that you get isn't always um, the most accurate. So um, I watch wines like this and uh, it's amazing how, how they actually do calm down. It's a bit like one of those, what I call big dog syndrome. It sort of comes up and then yaps at you and sort of go rah, 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 puts its paws on your shoulders and then 10 minutes later it's asleep and your feet are going brrrr or scratch me under the chin. So I will wait to see whether that needs scratching under the chin later and uh, move on to its um, relative. Don't know if it's the same vineyard, but it's uh, Barossa Shiraz uh, called a mother's milk. Same alcohol and uh, give it a whirl. Two things I notice here. This feels like a, a deeper, darker, more savoury wine. Um, bits of tomato along with the plums and berries. Uh, also, there's a bit of more toastiness in here, so it makes me think that it's got uh, uh, quite a bit of oak on it. But it's uh, because the fruit is so lush and ripe, but not ripe, verging on the uh, um, yeah, verging on the overripe. Uh, it, it, yeah, the, the oak yeah holds its balance in there. It's there, but it's not overwhelming the wine. It just feels uh, fresh and. Uh, yeah, fresh is a weird word to use for 14.5% alcohol wine, but it uh, feels like there's going to be a bit of freshness here. And that's the moody but magnificent one. Um, yes, there's a, it's weird that that toastiness of the oak flits in and out, but it's this just really big, broad, beefy, um, but friendly fruit. As I say, not jammy. It's got this element of um, almost like um, if you uh, do tomatoes and you just... Chop, chop the tomatoes, a bit of olive oil in the oven with some herbs. That type of uh, tomato savouriness coming out of them, uh, along with these plums, the berries, and uh, uh, this. Uh, it must have been the Morvedre giving that almost that iron-rich touch on the on, on the one before. Uh, but here, um, you're getting yes, this uh, undercurrent of earthiness, and uh, I don't know what what type of soil that they, they'll have here. But there's like a, a warm, a red earthiness about it, if that makes sense. Big hearty wine, but big hearty wine that, um, there's some big hearty wines that you think, I can't drink very much of that. But I wouldn't be surprised to see myself polishing off a, at least a second glass. And uh, uh, of course, I'd never have third glasses of anything. Uh, but if I did, I might, you know what I mean. Yeah, I like that. And as I said with the half and half, um, it's another one of those which, yes, it's, it can be very seductive to start with. I've got a feeling that this, it, this will be at its best tomorrow. Unfortunately, I'm going on holiday tomorrow, so there won't be any left. So, but I'm going out to see some people tonight, and uh, I'm going to take this with them. I'm going to take the other one, and we're going to see how we get on with it, and I will report back. See you soon.